Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, psychic medium Bill Phillips, who's here to share with us his new book, Soul Searching, Tune into Spirit and Awaken Your Inner Wisdom. So is it time to reclaim your destiny by connecting to your higher self? Well, today, Bill Phillips is here to share with us just that. Bill Phillips is a psychic medium whose life mission is to help people deal with the grief of losing loved ones by bringing through validation, evidential information, and beautiful messages from spirit, which heal and bring a sense of peace. He conducts individual and small and large group readings and has appeared on high-profile television programs like Dr. Phil and Access Hollywood. So welcome to the show, Bill Phillips. Thanks for having me. Well, it's such an honor to have you here to talk about soul searching. What inspired you to write this book? You know, this was during a time when uh, there was a lot of fear going on in the world and the world shut down. And I was being inspired by spirit to help sort of elevate the frequency to help people rise above that sort of um, fear cloud as spirit called it. And from that point forward, I kept getting a different, a lot of different nudges from spirit to how to access these sort of tools, these meditations, these visualizations to help elevate our frequency and to ultimately realize that we're the ones that are in control of this co-creation process and how we always have the power to direct our energy. And so that's basically in a nutshell where it all came from. Well, you start the book off by actually going to the child within. And a lot of people talk about working with our inner child. Why do we start there? It's a great question. You know, our inner child, I believe, is sort of like the pinpoint of light that enters this physical experience. And it's so incredibly impressionable. And so um, I know for myself included, A lot of things happened in my childhood um, where I was having different experiences. I I had the imaginary friends. I I was having a lot of different spirit experiences, too, and not really sure what to make of it. And I I remember being told that, you know, I had a really, um, I watched too many scary movies or I had a very vivid imagination. And so eventually that became my programming as a child. And I, I, you know, began to believe that information. And it wasn't until some years later that I was starting to have these experiences come back to me again. And I was able to make um, decisions at that point on my own um, of what really made sense to me. And so what I found was that I was able to reprogram that part of myself that um, was kind of closed off to the unlimited potential of what's available to us from spirit. And so I really believe that we all came into this world to share something. And um, if we go back and nurture that inner child, that that pin light that brought us into this physical experience, so much, so much can happen and so much growth can happen and so much love can happen. And we can experience the world with that feeling of unlimited potential. It seems that as we grow up, we're encouraged to disconnect from our intuition, our higher selves, and in some cases, even spirit by very well-meaning people. So it must be so difficult then to start navigating through experiences as they're happening. I really believe that um, there's, there's a huge shift happening right now in the world where people are having... And really just um, going with that experience and not not trying to rationalize it so much, you know, and a lot of why I, I decided to write Soul Searching was to help people make their own decisions about this, but to also understand that we're all channels in this world. We all came here gifted. And um, right now we're, we're living in a time where we have the ability to tune into that channel, to tune into that frequency, to make this life here in more enjoyable and more presentable and um, just more connected. So as you are writing this book, I know you, you were saying that you've, you were given nudges from spirit. Was it mm-hmm. that you were channeling this book or the information you're receiving is based on your own experiences as well that kind of interwoven that? 
It was it was actually both. So it was me going through my own life experiences and and during that process, spending time um, in meditation and coming up with these beautiful um, exercises. You know these these visualizations, and they so I I believe. Um, reflect who I am as a, as a soul as well. And I, I really wanted people to understand what I went through on my journey to show them that if I could get through this from what I had been through, then we all can get through this together. We're all here for the, for, for the similar purpose of ascension. And so it was really quite um, an interesting and beautiful experience, allowing those downloads to come to me during that writing process. Well, your book is so well written. I so enjoyed reading it. I just have to tell you, Soul Searching, I thought was such a fabulous read. One of the things you talk about in your book is letting go. So why is that so important? Super important because if we're, if we're not letting go of, let's just say, um, the past on some levels, or if we're not letting go of experiences that are infiltrating our present experience, it's sort of blocking us from our truest potential. It's blocking us from achieving, um, you know, success on on some level. And it's blocking us from having this beautiful moment in this present experience. And a lot of times, you know, because we basically truly exist from the the inward part of ourselves, right? From our mind perspective, from our subconscious perspective, we're already living, going back in between, you know, the past and the present. So when we take stock of that, and we're able to sort of let go of what's heavy on our heart or heavy on our body, I I really do believe that the world appears to be brighter to us, more vivid, we're able to see things that we wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. So in other words, we're, we're sort of like unshackling ourselves from um, this sort of limited view of being by letting go of what weighs us down. Is that what you mean by soul searching? Is that we're moving beyond that? Absolutely. Yes. Because, you know, as, as we are as we are questioning more and more about, you know, why we're here and what we're here to experience, um, there, there's two ways of consciousness. You know, there's the, there's the rational side of ourselves that is based within the ego part of our human existence too. And that side wants to sort of be comfortable. It, it, you know, it wants to question, but it also wants to be safe with um, more, you know, scientific knowledge, whereas our higher self, our all-knowing self, our, our spirit self has a different understanding and it's always, it's always transmuting information. We're, we're always picking up on things just sort of unbeknownst to us. And a lot of times what happens is that when we're receiving that divine information, our rational mind and our human side tries to make sense of it in a way that is comfortable. And sometimes that can cut us off from what the real spiritual truth is of our nature. You know, so I, I really wanted everyone to kind of delve deep within themselves to find their own connection to their higher selves, uh, to spirit, to the, to that divine information so that they're able to understand, Oh, now I understand this is what my rational mind feels and looks like. And this is what the unlimited version of myself feels and looks like. And when you have that awareness of how both sides of us um, operate, you know, kind of to, to thrive in this world, then you're able to find more balance between those two parts of ourselves. And in doing so, you're able to live a life of purpose. I think everyone wants to do that, especially now, because yeah. it seems like we're all searching for something, maybe maybe different's not the word, but something <laughs> more, you know? Yeah, we, we, are, we are really, um, we are searching for connection more than ever in our time in history. And I really do believe that um, energetically, you know, uh, what it comes down to is, is realizing that the physical part, even though we're in this physical experience, I, I completely understand that. But the other part of it, though, is that we don't have to be in the physical space together to have that connection. You know, that that connection can occur 
when you're speaking to somebody over the phone. It can occur, um, you know, going within and falling asleep and having a dream of someone who's in spirit or also having a dream of someone who is physically in this world, but let's just say life took you in different directions. So we're, we're always connecting energetically. And when we're able to kind of step out of the physicality of what that looks and feels like, then we're able to truly see that we're never alone on this journey. We're all together as one traveling at the same, at the same speed, basically. And I, I really believe that when we accept that truth, It takes away the stigma and it takes away this illusion that we're separate. Where do you think people get hung up when they start this practice? I I believe that the probably the biggest obstacle in the beginning is having um, our regular earthbound feelings come in. So like fear and doubt. Um, and that that could also be associated too with 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 a certain programming, you know, perhaps maybe um a religious type of background or, or something that makes them feel like, oh, you know, I, I have to do what I was taught when I was younger, you know, and that doesn't feel right to me. You know, there, there's going to be a lot of sort of fear and, and heavy emotions as you're unveiling and unlayering these, these sort of um, layers upon layers of human conditioning. So I believe that once we're able to sit and be with ourselves, you know, sit in the moment, sit in silence, sit with our soul. Um, there's always going to be some some pull and, and some, um, some fight a little bit with that rational side, with that ego side, because it wants to be in control. But once we're able to lessen and soften that voice over us and that energy over us, then we're able to to kind of open ourselves up to so many different possibilities. So I believe that if we're able just to kind of stick with it and do something daily, you know, it's the same, it's the same way that we have to brush our teeth daily. We have to take a shower daily. You know, we have to move our bodies daily. Um, why not take it to a more of a spiritual level as well? And the, um, the threshold for that and the, the foundation for that is going within. And the way to get there is through our imagination. It, it, it's going within to our mind, to the place within ourselves that understands that realm, that that likes to sort of have, um, you know, this uh, fantasy world, right? Or, or this other world within us. And when we're able to tap into that world, um, then I believe that it becomes stronger, like building a muscle. And the more that we give to it, the more we experience of it. So for those who say, well, I, I'm not very spiritual. I don't know if I can connect. They mm-hmm. can, right? hundred percent. And it really doesn't matter what your belief system is either. This is just stepping into a different part of yourself. And really when you're in that inward part of yourself, allowing yourself to be guided by that by that knowledge actually you know and for every person that that will look different for some people they will refer to god as a as a higher source or a higher power you know for some they, they will label it as such um spirit you know the other side whatever feels right to them and I'm someone that fully believes uh, of, you know, removing labels from things, you know, because I also believe that labels sort of um, pigeonhole people into believing that they have to, you know, do something a certain way. But when we're able to make our own distinctions and um, our own discernments about, about this part of ourselves, that's where our inner power comes from. Because we're, we're doing it without anyone else from the outside, you know, um, interfering. We're allowing ourselves to be unshakable by our own trust and, and our own faith within our own higher power. In your book, you talk about negative thoughts. How does that tie into all of this? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I believe that if you view negative thoughts as something that could be fear-based and egocentric, you know, it's sort of like part of that ego self that wants to keep things safe and comfortable. And so what happens is that 
those negative thoughts will accumulate and they will continue to gather strength with the more energy that we give to them. So I believe it's important to just let them out, you know, whether this, whether it means writing it down, seeing it on paper, perhaps getting it outside of yourself to see the reality of what's in front of you. Because once we, once we confront that negative thought and we see it for what it truly is, then we're able to sort of um, unplug the power from it. And we're able to see the reality of why that thought might be there in the first place. And in doing so, we're expanding our awareness of why we're having those thoughts. And within ourselves spreading our, our awareness, we're able to make different choices and we're able to give our attention and our energy and we're able to redirect our energy towards the opposite of those negative thoughts, which are the positive side of things, um, the unlimited thinking of our nature. We all have such an amazing ability to, um, you know, think outside the box and think of things that are just incredible. You know, we have created so much in a very short period of time in history. And so when you're able to really understand how each thought serves you, then you're able to make better choices about which thoughts you're wanting to let into your experience and which thoughts you're wanting to let in to your journey. And so I, I really believe that if we're able to quiet down those thoughts and perhaps replace them with the opposite, flipping the script around, you know, everything, everything in our life and on our journey is a reflection of our inner dialogue with ourselves. And just knowing that and owning that is, I believe, a very powerful step in changing our trajectory in life. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with psychic medium Bill Phillips in regards to his new book, Soul Searching, Tune Into Spirit, and Awaken Your Inner Wisdom. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. If you want to stop divorce fast, you do not need to waste years in therapy, you do not need to work on yourself, and you do not even have to have your spouse on board. If your spouse wants out, if they're filing for divorce, separation, or having an affair, what you need is a proven process to turn your marriage around. Book a free breakthrough session with us at highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. Dr. Richard London, who has 25 years of experience being known as the man of steel with the heart of velvet, presents the Life Wellness System, The Road to Yes, a mentoring system that brings you to becoming a wellness heir. Imagine having wealth, wellness, love, peace, and spirituality in abundance and balance now. Visit doctorateoflife.com or call 720-213-8021 for a free 15-minute wellness evaluation. Hi, this is Jana Wilson, author of Wise Little One, Learning to Love and Listen to My Inner Child, a best-selling prescriptive memoir in inner child healing. I'm also the founder of the Emotional Healing System. The inner child, simply put, is your feelings, both positive and negative. If you'd like to learn to love and listen to your wise little one, pick up my book at Amazon or visit my website at janawilson.com. It's never too late to have a happy childhood. The first thing you need to know about me is that I love my kids, but they are not my everything. They used to be, but that's when my entire life fell apart. In order to pick back up the pieces, I had to put the love I have for myself before everything else, including my kids. I'm Jessica Dennehy, and I own multiple businesses. I'm a best-selling author, and I have all the strategies that I've used to make my life what it is today. And I'm going to teach you how to do them in my new book, Selfish is a Superpower. So go get your copy today on Barnes & Noble or jessicadennehy.com. Announcing a revolutionary tool for wellness. Scalar Light has the ability to enhance and harmonize your own bio energies. With Scalar Light, you can get started in just minutes and begin feeling better the very next day. 
Scalar Light is a remote energy that gently and subtly works with your own body's bioenergies, increases pro-cellular wellness, and enhances your body's immunity. Experience the benefits of Scalar Light. Try a complimentary 15-day experience at ScalarLight.com. In your hands lie ancestral patterns. These patterns shape how you think, what you struggle with, and experiences you love, your life pattern. We are going into the latest neuroscience of biological hand analysis, a realm beyond palmistry where science and the soul entwine. Hand analysis is the latest method to transform lifelong patterns. I am Master Hand Analyst Brent Bruning. Join us and visit thepowerinyourhands.com. Pandemonium. Fast forward 20 years. A U.S. president seizes control of all U.S. missiles, the power grid, the banking system, and every computer in America as he hides in an underground bunker. Pandemonium, a captivating sci-fi thriller where a hidden war, psychics, aliens, artificial intelligence, and transcendental love collide with the latest media technology. Pandemonium, live to all devices. Get your copy on paperback or digital. Free sample at getpsychic.org. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, psychic medium Bill Phillips, who's here to share with us his new book, Soul Searching. Tune into spirit and awaken your inner wisdom. We've talked about our thoughts, but how about our Mm -hmm. words? Do our words have power? Yes. Everything that we speak holds a vibration to it. This even goes down to, to, you know, um, listening to certain music, you know, or watching certain programming, everything that we're experiencing that we're taking in or that we're putting out has a vibration to it. And every vibration has a frequency to it. And it has a way of sort of manipulating the energy around you, or it has a way of creating the energy around you. So even when, you know, someone maybe let's just say wants to joke about themselves in a, in a silly way, let's just say, you know, but maybe, the, maybe their joke is a little bit derogatory to their own self-esteem, that those words have a lasting effect. Um, and so this is why it's so important, right, to affirm who we are in the moment and affirm how we truly feel about ourselves and affirm the, um, affirm the choices that we're making now to become the best version of ourselves. But it all goes down to our language and our language begins with our spoken word, but it also begins with our intention. And I really do believe that our intention is one of our biggest superpowers in this life because we're able, once we're able to see how the energy responds to our intentions, right? How the universal energy responds to our energy and our output, then we are being very selective with our intentions that we're making. So I I live my life this way. From the moment that I get up in the morning, I have an intention within my mind before I even get out of bed. And throughout the day, I will continue to use my inner dialogue to create new intentions. And the way that I view intentions is sort of like a little uh, pin light of, of manifestation. So by just sitting for a couple of seconds and either visualizing or conjuring up a feeling about an energy source that perhaps you're wanting to experience that day or soon after, and then releasing it, surrendering it out to the universe. It's like a slingshot and it comes back to you pretty quickly, actually. So um, I really wanted people to understand that concept. And through my, through my examples as well, by just taking a moment throughout your day, even if you don't do it first thing in the morning, maybe you'll eventually get there, but 
taking a moment just to sort of be and see and visualize and vibrate with the energy that you're wanting to experience around you. And it all goes back to the vibration of our words. And it also goes back to the vibration of our thoughts. They are interconnected. In your book, you talk about praying and you say that praying prayer is a process of active dialogue with our higher power. And how often do we think someone prays and it just goes, who knows where it goes, you know, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe kind of a black hole or what have you, but that active dialogue, what do you mean by that? My active dialogue is basically just understanding that going back to having this language with our higher self, right? We all, we all in some way are, are talking to our higher selves throughout the day. And then if we go a little bit deeper with it and we, and we talk about prayer now, not, not everyone prays, but what I find is that when someone's in a crisis mode, when, when someone sort of hit a bottom of their life and they have no other way out of this, there is a silent knowing within themselves that's telling them to pray or it's telling them to ask within themselves to give some kind of vocalization to a higher power. And so when you go into that space, into that prayer module or that prayer voice, let's just say, not only are are you um, setting the intention or, you know, um, creating the energy ahead for you, but you're also connecting with spirit you're connecting with your guides your angels you're connecting with your loved ones who have crossed over and what i get to see and experience every day is when i am channeling for other people a lot of the times um their prayers are are being spoken about within their sessions you know where they were saying oh my god i was i've been praying for this and it's coming out right now you know and that that also validates how how the other side works in the background to help us co-create with our inner dialogue, with our active dialogue. And it really is just as simple as going within and just talking, talking the source, talking the spirit. I think a lot of people sometimes forget about the power of prayer. And I really appreciate you sharing that with us because I felt that that chapter was so impactful for me. Yeah, you know, these are these are tools that we came here equipped with. And the beautiful thing about life is that when we are challenged with something or we're, or we're facing adversity or something that goes beyond the regular flow of things, we have access and we, we remember on a soul level, typically, how to get back there. And it's something as simple because it's part of our spiritual dna actually to to be connected to that higher power that's why we're here we're here to balance those two worlds and we're here to sort of create based upon our dialogue with our higher power do people share with you like their frustrations the world is so chaotic there's so much anger and pain and just evil that seems to be permeating everything so how do we how do we get to this place where we can find some peace and just be within ourselves? Mm -hmm. I do. And I, I hear this a lot, um, you know, from people just in, just in a waking life, you'll, you know, it's pretty simple. If you go to the grocery store or the gas station, somewhere along those lines, you're going to start to to pick up on that frequency. People are going to be talking about the state of the world right now. Um, but when you're, again, when I, what I like to do is whenever um, those comments come my way, just, you know, in passing, I like to always flip the energy for that person. I like to stop the energy for myself in its tracks. So I'm not, I'm not absorbing it. And I try my best just to kind of pay it forward by just literally flipping the statement back and just saying something like, well, what a beautiful day it is today. And aren't we grateful that we're, that we're here right now in this moment together? You know, something as simple as that can really reset um, that dialogue with someone where they're going, oh, wow, I haven't heard someone talk like this in a while. That's interesting. But it lifted me up, though, just hearing someone say that, you know. So I, I really do know that when we're able to go within and sort of disconnect from that grid of physical energy and that and that sort of um again this fear clay this fear-based cloud that we're all um 
that we all have access to as well, when we're able to vibrate above it and go, rise above it through our own spiritual tools, whether that be meditation or prayer or whatever feels right to you, there is a place when you do realize that you, those two elements are a choice and that those two elements are completely separate. They cannot exist on the same line of energy. And when you're able to see it from that angle, then you want to choose the higher road. You want to choose the higher path because it also feels better as well. And it's contagious. So I know that a lot of people, when we're going into that higher level of being, we'll start to attract people around us that have the same thought concept as well. And so you might be, you know, on social media, reading a post, and then you have found exactly what you're looking for there. Or it might be that you are, again, um, going to an, an exercise class somewhere to better your health. And within that moment, there's people there that are speaking the same language. And it has that really positive, uplifting vibe to it. And that's also validation, too, that your thoughts and prayers are also being heard and being directed back to you when you're able to see just how quickly your outer world changes by the energy that you're putting out. And it really is a lot more simplistic than we give it credit for being. It sounds like we make it much harder than it should be. <laughs> we, we do because this is how this is the human side of ourselves that likes to, you know, have that comfort and challenge and have that comfort and obstacles. But once we're able to really kind of um, tune out of that way of being, then it becomes fun, actually, to, to, to really engage with, um, w- with your higher self in that way, because you're, you're seeing by just kind of giving it away, surrendering, you know, praying, setting the intention. It's like leaving these little magical breadcrumbs out in front of you. And then you're seeing how the, how they manifest back to you. And that is really exciting when we see the results of that. And I believe that if we're able to just see the results of the most simplest nature of just, you know, how we're feeling um, down to, let's just say someone opening a door for you, walking into a building too. Those those moments are priceless and they definitely show you that you're not alone and that you're we're all in this together and that how different the world can be when we operate from this way of being. In your book, you talk about grief and I'd love for you to share a little bit about your thoughts on that with us. Yes, um, I, I really... Having had my own grief as well from an earlier age, and you know, my mother transitioning when I was fourteen, and to her becoming my my biggest ally and cheerleader from the other side, what I've come to realize grief is is just an accumulation of so much love. That love is so overwhelming that when we are in the grief space, it is palpable and we feel we have this gushing coming from our heart center it's an overwhelming feeling but if we're able to understand that that feeling is associated with how much love we felt for this individual or for the circumstance then it has a different meaning to it all all along because we're understanding that it's an energy source and the energy source is complete love, unconditional love. And that to me is just overwhelming just speaking those words as well. It, you know, it, it, it brings along with it this, this emotional component because another thing that we all connect with here in this world is grief, you know, is we, we've all lost somebody physically to this experience and what that feels like for each individual. But the one thing that ties us all into it is knowing that we're in this together as well and that we've loved, we've loved so much on this journey. So I I look at it from that perspective and that makes, that really for me is so healing as well. Whenever I go into my own feeling of grief, of just recognizing what that energy actually is and seeing it as such, seeing it for what it is, 
of, of this incredible connection and this incredible bond and this incredible love, it changes the way that you perceive the situation. Well, Bill, I mean, we can talk for hours. I found your <laughs> book to be just so empowering. Where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about your work? Absolutely. They can find me at my website, which is just my name, billphillips.com. It is spelt with one L and two P's at the end. Um, I'm also on social media as well. I do something called daily inspiration for my community where I aim to just lift everyone's spirits and provide um, different content um, that will really speak to their souls. And um, that could all be found as well on, on my website. Well, Bill, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Well, thank you, Bill. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Soul Searching. Tune into spirit and awaken your inner wisdom. Soul Searching is available to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And remember, support our indie bookstores. You can also purchase this book directly from the publisher, New World Library, at newworldlibrary.com. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.